Inside of Africa is Uganda. Inside of Uganda are some men who want to change it. Pastor Peter started Gaba Community Church and Africa Renewal Ministries, or ARM. ARM sent out Pastor Gerald to pastor in Rashiri at Rashiri Community Church. Pastor Richard Logan of River Point Church in Texas, along with Living Water International, have begun a partnership with Rashiri Community Church. These are not men of paper plans or airy dreams, but of iron will grinding through the jungle. This is their story. Right. So we just turn over there. Oh. My house is just over here. Okay. Friends, you are most welcome. Uh, this is my room. I sleep here, and that is my kitchen room, that is my sleeping room. Uh, you can come in and say bless the house. Uh, I was uh, our only boy from my mother's womb, but when it took a long time, my mom went, was not giving birth to another child. Uh, my dad went out to find other ladies or other women. My family is from three, three wives or three ladies. I don't know how we can call the other ladies, maybe remain calling them concubines. He was really a, a strong drunkard. He could come late back home, uh, and our house he used to, you know, to have cherry cans of waraji and those local, local wines or local brews. Alcoholism is one of the major causes of poverty and family neglect in this country. Uh, a, a man can drink to death without providing food on the table here. It's easy to find uh, a family man just on the roadside drunk and, uh, you know, but home they don't have food, but you wonder where he got the money for drinking. Okay, my life was not good. I was drinking beer. I started drinking like seven. I think that they will help me. But nothing, nothing changed. But the drunkards are there. You cannot fail to get some bad elements within the society. But when we get them along the road, especially at night, we also correct them, we bring them for, yeah, for correction. I became a Christian in 1994. Uh, when I went back, uh, I, I told my dad that today I have accepted the Lord Jesus. And my dad couldn't understand what Jesus is, accepting Lord Jesus, so what? They allowed him to keep going in that church while they were sometime going to their Roman Catholic church and worship idols of Mary. I just uh, realized that I need a a future of my life and I just realized that you no know, I need to change place change place from where and go to town whereby my gifts can really flow. Gerald's journey would lead him to the center of Uganda. Uganda is roughly the size of Oregon but its population is ten times as large at just over thirty four million. Uganda has the second highest population growth rate in the world at six children per woman on average. At this growth rate, Uganda will reach 100 million by the year 2050. 35% of Ugandans live below the world poverty line. About half of the population does not have access to clean drinking water or proper sanitation. Countless hours are wasted on walking long distances collecting water. Precious income is wasted on purchasing water and medical treatment for water-related diseases. There is about one doctor for every 12,000 Ugandans. Generally, uh, it should be a running message that people need to use uh, toilets, the right toilets, and also safe drinking water. What people are using mainly in the villages is dams. The, the domestic use water is used, and as well as animals. 
So they kind of share these two and I think that's where problems come. The need for water still remains. Women and children are especially vulnerable on trips to retrieve water. Women would go to fetch water a distance. So you find the children, the young girls and women, they are there lining up for water. Now some men and these young men and the women, they could take advantage. Children miss out on school, work is affected, so as people go for water at the long distance, some criminals can take advantage of even stealing within the houses. It was so exciting for the first time I landed into Gaba Community Church. Gaba had a tent which he used it to, to, to follow down, especially when it rains. By then when we were uh, lifting that tent back in its normal state. Uh, I just heard that this is the pastor, Peter. Yeah, my name is Peter Kasirivu. I am a pastor here at Gaba Community Church, and I am the founder of Africa Renew Ministries here in Uganda. I was 19 years old. For the first time, I realized that Jesus is a savior, not only for the older people, but even for young people like me. For the first time, I realized that there is a big need out there in the world. People need to know who Jesus Christ is. And then God later on called me to this very community of Gaba. The community of Gaba was a very interesting community. Actually, I have to confess, I never loved Gaba in the first place. Because Gaba, of that time, was a little fishing village. And most of the people here were not going to school. There were little stores in the village. They're still, it's still a poor community. What does that mean? Okay. This area is dominated by shrines. People, they, they go to, to the witch doctors. Uh, so the life it is very tough because we stay in the slum area. This is the shrine where they, are, where they, are, where they worship the uh, idol and the, uh, the, the spirit of ancestors. So when the people come here, uh, they come to ask from, from, from here in this shrine. Uh, they want their life to be, to be good. Uh, they expect that the, the, the evil spirit or the spirit of the ancestors can help them uh, for prosperity, to get something. So they, they used to come here every, uh, every time. Uh, this one is the one of them. He's sitting there on the stool. On the stool, yeah. He's among the, the witch doctors. There are little shrines that you find here and there. And just here next door to the church, there was a man who was a witch. And this witch had a shrine and he was doing witchcraft for business. And it was a very tough thing because this guy used to even bring the goats and the sheep and other things that people sacrifice. Uh, we were having a little Bible study and I had some shouts. Uh, and I was wondering what those shouts were. Uh, and you know what happened was that there was a fire that caught the shrine. And that fire ended up being to me an answer to God. To them, I think they thought it's an accident, but God had visited. We prayed over that ground, we took it over, we bought it off, and it is now being used for the glory of God. God can do anything. So people came slowly by slowly, and I would say it was because of prayer, 
and the aggressive evangelism that our people have here. God started growing us. Today we have hundreds of people uh, who come to church every Sunday and Gaba Church is a parent church to over 200 uh, churches around the country of Uganda. One of the young men that God brought our way uh, is Jared. Okay, uh, getting close to Pastor Peter so much, it was a mission. I was waking up in the morning and uh, I asked him to clean his shoes and I always asked him to handle his bag. So he saw a younger man who is interested to, to serve God. We encouraged him, we helped him, and he later on came to us and said, I want to go and be prepared for ministry. So I remember we took him to Bible school. Uh, I thought that I know Bible, but when I went to Bible college, I realized that I knew nothing from the Bible. I did 96 credit hours to make my diploma certificate. So it really gave me a wonderful time to learn about God and ministry. I, I graduated in 2007. And not long ago, uh, a need surfaced, and that need was in western Uganda, uh, in a place called Rushere. But at first I ignored that completely because it wasn't in my mind at all to to go in villages, you know, I never wanted to go in the village, it was in my mind. And at the same time I was struggling with a relationship, I had a girlfriend who was very funny. So uh, <laughs> my life was located in the city. So, and we kept on praying and said, God, who will go for us? The Lord, who will go for us and be able to help that community of Rochere? And I remember one day, uh, this young man, Gerard, comes and says, I will be that man. I will go and I will help. Rashiri sits in the southwest region of Uganda with a population of about 30,000. Their specialty is tailoring and dairy farming. Each day tailors produce clothing for much of the region. Their work is tireless and tedious, but they are happy to do it. The dairy farming industry is the most viable and growing source of income for the people of Rasheri. 365 million liters of milk flow through Uganda each year. 80% of the nation's milk comes from this little town. One of the constraints of milk production is a shortage of drinking water during the dry seasons. So I finally landed uh, and the land of Rochere. Yeah, I was in a relationship with uh, uh, one of the younger ladies in Gawa Community Church, but uh, we were really struggling. 
because a person like me, I needed a, a, a wife who has a servanthood heart, who understands my calling. If it is God's will, since I'm going to Rochelle, if she accepts to go with me in Rochelle, then it will be God's will. If she refuses, then I will know it is not God's will. So it happened when I came to Rochelle, the girl never, never even tried to come. I took almost a year. You know, she keeps me telling me, lie, I'm coming today, I'm coming to what, what. Until really I realized that, you know, feel free to find another husband for you. Since you are not interested in the ministry, uh, after counseling that relationship, just two weeks, just two weeks, I just received a call from one of her sisters telling me, are you still in a relationship with Grace? I said, no, we broke out. And she told me, yes, I was going to warn you. We just found her with a man sleeping. We have caught them live sleeping in her mother's bed. So she's not the right person to go with you since you're a man of God. Well, that girl was a crook. When I come to this relationship, she, pretend, she pretended as if she loves me so much. So that time I had to raise my hand and thank God because really God helped me. It was I myself who was pushing it into a pit. But for God's mercy, he just helped me, uh, you know, to, to cancel that relationship. My name is Richard Logan. I work at River Point Church. I'm the missions pastor here. Uh, here. Here in Richmond, Texas, we started what we call Friends of North Richmond. And it's initiative to an under-resourced community that's just five miles from our church. And it has this whole idea of community development. So it's, it's more about uh, a hand up than a hand out. As we saw that happening locally, we really felt the call from, from, from Scripture to do this uh, globally as well as we look at the Great Commission. So I was sitting with Brandon Baca who works with Living Water International and uh, just through our natural friendship we were talking about the things that were happening in North Richmond and that initiative and he brought up Uganda. He had just returned and said man you've got to hear uh, and see what's going on in Uganda. My name is Brandon Baca. I work with Living Water International. Uh, Living Water International exists to uh, encounter people that lack access to clean, safe water, provide a resource of clean, safe water to the world, but also the living water of Jesus. 21 years ago now, a group of businessmen from Houston went on a mission trip to Mombasa, Kenya. And so one of the guys on the trip, his name was Harry Westmoreland, and he ended up he was like an engineer, like he was just a smart guy. And so he came back and he was like, what can we do? How can we, how can we do this? And he actually invented the first LS100, which is a, a 100 foot, 100 foot portable drilling machine that you can basically fit in a box that four guys can carry. And uh, so the idea, well, it was really low tech, kind of like lawnmower engine type stuff. But uh, these, these businessmen kind of came back and, and said, we're going to, we're gonna tackle water. And they just, they saw the need for water in rural areas. So it was not long before I found myself on a plane with Brandon and another friend of mine, we went out and, and looked at how could River Point Church uh, start a church to church partnership in Uganda and do community development there, much like we were doing here. I didn't really know much about Rosheri at the time, other than I was gonna go and see it. In that trip, we were able to connect with um, ministries like uh, Africa Renewal Ministries and see the, the actual connection in country between Living Water International and ARM. And um, he got to meet some of the staff and all that. So it was really, it was really great. The building behind me is the head office for Africa Renewal Ministries. 
What we do basically, Africa Renewal's vision, as you know, is to raise leaders. And we are a support system to what is going on. One of the ways that we can support the churches is to by giving them a, a church partner from the West. Um, most of our church partners come from America, though we have some from Canada, we have other church churches that we're partnering with in the UK and also in Holland. And what we try and do is we try and marry up a church in the West with one of our local churches. So for example, River Point Community Church, they, they came here, their missions pastor came here on a trip and he felt God call them to connect with Rosheri Community Church. And we head down the road and we get to Rosheri and Pastor Gerald's basically standing in the road waiting to greet us. He was quite excited and uh, he jumps in our van and we start to get this kind of um, uh, whirlwind tour of Rosheri. And I remember we sat down in this um, temporary building that was his church and there were some um, folks from, from the church there and he just sat and told us the story. Before Pastor Gerard came here we were having a pastor but in 2006 that pastor he be misbehaves he fell in love with someone's wife, and which is not good in, in the church, even in the community. We as a church and the whole community decided to chase that man away from this community. I don't know where he is now, but he is no longer in this place. So when Gerard went, really, it's like the church had totally scattered. Uh, people had run away because they had been frustrated by this young man. So he responded to a need. Uh, he gathered those who would still be there. As he came here, for me, I don't think that he is able to be as an hour as I see him. For me, I thought, uh, I thought that maybe this is a young boy will not uh, lead, uh, lead us. So I saw that uh, I, I have a poor, poor at, attitude towards him, that he seeing that he's a very young man, very young man. The way I go about shepherding these people is through relationship. I make sure that I love each and everyone the way she is, poor, rich, old, young, uh, I just love them the way they the way they are. So that's the way how I've won favor uh, from people in the community because God is using me really to bless their physical needs and spiritual needs. When they see us struggling in that situation, having no land, having such a church, they can't think that there is life in such a, a church. But you know, uh, being temporary on someone who's land is really a, a shameful thing. Tell us if your God can heal, why don't your God buy for, for your church a land or build for your church, a good looking church? There's no way you can convince that God does uh, greater things while you are in such situation. So it's a challenge. We have to see the church grow and develop because that's the conduit of hope and reconciliation for these communities is through the church. So yeah, Living Water um, really wants to be a behind the scenes ministry in, in some ways. We want to elevate and promote the local leadership if it's about living water, then we're missing a critical piece of, of really Christ's desire to see the church be a proclamation of the kingdom. Because we know that the church is the vehicle through which we can change a nation. Rosheri Community Church and River Point now are coming into what we call a church to church, C to C partnership agreement. And so Africa Renewal as a partner, Garba Community Church as a partner, and River Point Community Church as a partner. We all working together to support Pastor Gerald on the ground and the work that he feels that God is calling him to do. Now, obviously there is financial implications in that. There's lots of costs all over the world. It's different um, in every context, based on debt, type of equipment, um, fuel used, all those kinds of things. In Uganda, we found that generally our costs are around 12000 a well. A well is simply a hole in the ground that reaches down to an aquifer. 
Wells vary in depth. Hand dug wells that are unsafe go down about 50 feet. That is about the size of the Hollywood sign. Shallow wells go down about 200 feet. That is about the size of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Deep wells go down about 1,500 feet. That is about the size of the Sears Tower. A screened filter stops particles from entering into the pumped water. Drilled wells are lined with PVC and galvanized steel to protect from pollution seeping in. The system is sealed to prevent contaminants from being introduced from the surface. When Richard D. Logan came, uh, he asked me the needs of the community, and I majorly mentioned about water. Then, uh, when I mentioned about water, uh, again, Pastor Richard Logan asked me, do you have any water source around? Where do you currently get water? I took him to see the, the very dam, and he was eyewitness. And I just asked him, I said, I said, so you're telling me people are coming today, on Sunday, to get water here? And he said yes. Watch this. How did water affect the people spiritually, or did it? Maybe I can say stress, because stress is, you know, looking for water the whole day, you know, getting nothing. You feel stressed, you know. We have to get the community buy-in. We have to say that this is an open location for the community. No one person should own it. So if we're going to put it next to this person's house, we've got to get this person to give up land to the community and make that a community, community well. So um, a, lot of, a lot of people, um, and especially in ministry and as, as believers, we, we really have great hearts and we really believe, man, let's just bless these people. Let's just give them this well for free. And man, we've done our great work. But the problem, what happens is, is that when we do that, the community doesn't see it as their well. For me, what we've learned is that water's free and the water from the sky is free. So if you want that, go ahead and get it. But any type of artificially serviced delivered water. The only reason your water works at home is because you pay a water bill and the company can service the pipes and the trucks and the pumps and the treatment center and have it come in. So even though we're talking fairly simple delivery, we're still talking about artificially bringing water from 60 to 80 meters below the earth and a hand pump up to the top. And it's gonna take maintenance and repair. There's nothing wrong with these things, but in two years, it's not gonna work without some sort of maintenance and repair. You know, you may think, why would we ask for money? Or why would they set up a, a person standing there asking for just a few shillings just for a jerry can full of water? Well, what happens is there's buy-in. There's not only buy-in at the physical monetary level, but there's buy-in at the community level where the community really believes this is our project. We're paying for this, and it's our responsibility to take care of this. And that is important to see communities develop over time. A lot of people in development look at that and as soon as money gets involved, they kind of go, oh, like that's, well, that's not what we want to do. But the reality is that's what's in these economies that we just need to get, we need to get cash flowing around a little bit. One of the things that Africa Renewal has learned over the last couple of years is that we are very, as an organization, we are very donor dependent. And we realize, particularly with the credit crunch that's happened in the last two years um, across the world, that we need to work at becoming a more sustainable organization and doing things that are sustainable, churches, projects, um, whatever we do to have a sustainable element to it. So um, sustainability is kind of a buzzword out there and there's a lot of misconceptions about what is and isn't sustainable. But at Living Water, what we found is that um, there are some steps to see uh, communities grow over time. No matter the culture, no matter the, the context, no matter the, the, the continent, um, community development must and should start with clean water. The people who work with us uh, want to know whether the funds they are sending really reach the final beneficiary uh, in a village somewhere in Uganda, for example, Rusheri. Um, but we've put in place systems and at all these levels, we have auditors who check the funds that reached that office and the funds that were released to another level. And so the auditors help us to do that. But the key and important thing is we concentrate, we look for Christian staff. 
the staff we have are Christians, and so we believe they have a certain level of integrity. They handle the funds they receive. They know those are God's resources. People know if you hand handle badly resources, then there are consequences. And one of them is a police case. We've had staff taken to police. If you are given money to do this and you use it for another thing, then it ceases to be our responsibility. The law takes its course. People know that it's not a joke. We agree to do A. If you do B, then there are consequences for that. So that has helped a lot. Yeah, uh, the spiritual condition about Rishere when I felt alive, uh, most people were suffering from these demonic attacks called the Bachwezi. They, they have their slimes, and then there is the leader of the slime, and people used to go there on that slimes to, to worship them. That person who is possessed with Bachwezi told me that I will never get married get birth, but uh, when it comes, uh, okay, for me I'm tired of those spirits. We were having a um, trust priest in our home, yeah, she's the one who normally teaches how to, to, to worship those virtues, yeah. I'm going to talk to you about the truth, and I'm going to Atenga bintu wala nga mara wiki si mutare ngei. Nga vida mubi nko mia uwaka. Okutoka wena kuya ilabi ya vya ngana no kusoma. Wena genda nga kusoma. Nebi nsa nga mkubo, nebi nkwa hata, nebi nkwa hata mutare. Kani yo msaramu, nyaka atano na mshanju. Msaramu nubweja sangu ala, nubwewe God. Kongkatu buku sebrabi. Um seramu na buka nama tahiwe. Amu itu muka frun. Um itu utahistiri. Ecibi. Most of them were just here a few days back. They came with money because these people are poor, very very poor. Most of them came with money. If you accept to become a Muslim, they give you 200,000. Now, a person who ends that day without having even a coin of 100, you promise him 200,000, definitely has to join. My father is a Muslim. My father has 13 wives, and but now there are five others, they died. And my mom was the last wife of my father. And on my side it was bad because it never helped us. We suffered. We ha we had we have we having many brothers and sisters. It's good of having many brothers and sisters, but they they don't help us, they didn't help us when our dad died and it was bad. In the Muslim we could go and we knew that but we we can't spray with men. Uh, when I first Settled in Rusere, it was in a desolate way in terms of standards of living. Because there was no water, mosquitoes were high. My problem for Nshere Pango Ser, water, we get water from far distance, from here, four kilometers from here. The major problems here are malaria and I think it's one of the problems that comes with stagnant water um, and most of our cases are malaria cases. 
Malaria is a parasitic infection that's um, transmitted by the mosquito and it keeps transmitting it from one infected patient to another. These mosquitoes breed on stagnant water and bush and it's the most rampant disease in, in the area. It was 2000, it was 2009. People were suffering from malaria fever, seriously suffering. About 80% of these people around here, they were tested malaria fever. Yes. Uh, malaria is uh, a disease that symptoms include fever, high grade, it can actually affect the brain, uh, it can cause vomiting, and quite the patient is quite ill. It, it could kill if no treatment is, is done. Yeah, some, sometimes I get sick through this malaria. Uh, all, uh, the all of my body, it feels the pain. Uh, it, uh, it is for two, through all, three, 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 three years. Yeah, HIV is also a problem. There is a problem of ignorance. For them, they don't even test. They do conceive it and remain standing and even spreading it to the, to the community members. They don't test. Yeah. Well, a, a percentage of HIV infection generally in the nation has been around 6%. Or HIV is one of the major problems here in, in, in Chihura. Chihura is a district, Rosheri is just a town. Uh, one of the reasons is that behavior change is not yet complete. Uh, how people live and how people transmit HIV still remains uh, significantly, um, uh, if, I mean, Im impacting. When you talk of HIV rate in Chihura district, it is 13.6 percent. It doubles the countrywide. For the case of countrywide, it is 6.3 percent. But Chirhura district doubles even the country rate. They do practice sex outside the marriage. They do practice adultery. We are trying to see a reduced behavior, um, but still it's the challenge. People are still transmitting HIV. Secondly, uh, there are the, the, the infected patients do not report to hospital in time, so we still have a problem with HIV. So these are some of the patients waiting to see the, the doctor inside there. This is a water tank. It collects water from the roof. If you can see these uh, drainage areas from the roof, roof harvesting. There are two tanks in here. One is about 10,000, another one 5,000, something like that. I'm not exact, but it, it holds almost 15 to, to 20,000 liters here and to supplement on the water supply. But suffering, it was a constant way of living. Cholera, dysentery, diarrhea, malaria fever, testing day and night. And they take herbs and drugs and they be relieved within such a period of time, but after having suffering. Njagala kuwa kubudurizi ku manjena wange ayafa mfamile yafe. Uwensonga e kwa raganya na mazi. Nibageza ku okutuma anga abana, kubaba tumanga kunona anga mazi mbefebi ya wala. Atenge ibidamu, ibidamu vinene atenga viwavu. Kati buyasena akaduma nekamusu matuka, This is not my song, this is not my song, this is not my song, this is not mine, 
Help me sing along. This is not my song. This is not my song. This is not mine. Between our oceans wide tonight, we are closer than we realize tonight. I don't think we are all that different. <laughs> So here, God is love is tangible. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. So love is tangible. God is love is tangible. So today, this morning, this afternoon, we have come with tangible love of God. As the time went on, from 2009 to 2010, the time he has spent with us, we are seeing a real improvement in terms of discipleship ministry and evangelism ministry. But this is, this is God's love which brings eternal life into our lives. So the benefit of accepting Jesus Christ, number one, is eternal life. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and life. There is no other way to heaven. Some people believe in Muhammad, others believe in Bachwezi, others believe in other creatures, animals, trees. And but the only way is Jesus Christ, the Son of Living God. We are seeing a great impact. The name of Jesus is being spread. And whenever I look at them, I say, praise the Lord. Leaders are being raised, leaders that will transform communities in Africa. Okay, tiny babas, Conca edini yitu, Nisibi in Simire, Okujerem babas, Menu Nichonta Kuvasa Kugachira on Saram, Nisimam Kamar Hang Wahigur, Nisimar Hangam Nonga Kurevang Hati, Nin Yamango Shejera, Nobjuzu Wamasco, Ibrahim Amina. Okay, when I found the three muscles in my stomach, uh, my okay, I feel not okay because I was having a lot of pain. So I was, I was thinking that I'm going to die. Even my husband was in, in terrible way. He was thinking that I will not be back in life. Yeah, but when I turned back and tell Pastor Gerard. He's the one who played for me. He, he spent three, three days fasting for me. So God had changed the, the situation. Yeah. I have the proof that he, all the messes were disappeared. Because I go back, the real day they were going to operate me. They found the messes were not seen. So I have the truth. These are the things. Wow! It strengthened my faith because now I can tell others that God can do everything that man cannot do. I was in the house and 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 I I decided to become a born again, a born again Christian because I saw God's mercy. When my mom came, became a born again Christian, the life of my mom changed. I feel peace in Jesus Christ. Now I'm, I'm free. 
And I first ask God to forgive me, and I, I ask the forgiveness from my sisters and brothers. God tell them, please forgive me. I know that I annoyed you. Forgive me this way and this way. Even tell them that, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. You're so stupid. I could tell them those bad words. So I prayed God to forgive me about that. And they forgave me. Okay, when I came at the Shere Community Church, they were teaching, preaching, singing. Then I just I was standing near the near the door, hearing them, thinking that they are doing their own. I go back. The next time they think they prayed, eh? I hear my heart pumping very I say, eh, what is going on? I said, God help me. I was doing such a things in a wrong way. So God help me. This is your place and I'm here. Now I am newborn again. Uh, there is a lot of work. There is a lot of work because we are lacking so many things. But since we have a great God, there is hope. We know that it will be done. We have hope. So on Christmas of 2010, we presented to River Point um, this idea of partnering with Rosheri Community Church and Africa Renewal Ministries to tackle some of the issues that were going on there with water and also just support the church and um, help them become all that, that God would want them to be. So a little later, you're going to hear about an opportunity to give above and beyond that to make a Christmas gift as your family to folks you'll never meet.
to help people in Africa with clean water, and you'll hear about that in just a minute. The response from River Point was, was amazing, and we were able to begin tackling the water problem as a result of, of just a couple of offerings, actually, that were taken in December. I just received a call from one of his team telling me that we are coming to drill water. But Bo told me that this source uh, has happened because of uh, Richard Logan came and so the needs you have, we, we talked about water situation. Once we hit water, it's pretty exciting. We, we have basically the basic framework of, of a new well for a community. So it's like, wow, the community is excited. We are, we're flushing out that well, we're developing it, water spraying everywhere, and it's just a big party, you know, in the community, it's a lot of fun. After that, we put casting in, and then we put all the parts in, to, and we basically set the pump. That's why this borehole has brought a bigger impact since they came. They came. It was too big to everyone in the community. And when they realized that, yeah, it was done through a church, now they respect our church. For the first time, I saw the police guys, the uh, <laughs> police guys coming in the church. Uh, the impact of Boahov has done so much to increase the dignity and the honor to our church. And if in 10 years there's 20 boreholes there because of whoever in partnerships, great. The idea is they all come under one umbrella, but I told them, look, these three are coming in because of this church. The church gets a seat at the table. The church gets a seat on the committee. The church gets a seat on, on accountability and transparency and record keeping and what happens with that money. So in uh, 2011, we put together a team of 10 and headed back to Rosheri. And uh, of course, Pastor Gerald was there to greet us. Thank you so much, uh, our friends from River Point. We are very excited to see you. Thank you for the donation you gave to the water wells. It came in the time where the land was drought. The drought lasted for almost five months. It was very costly to get water. And everyone is actually appreciating the River Point. The village is expecting you to, you know, to see you physically. Who are these guys who donate, who did this? Because it failed the government to do it. But thank you so much for doing it. May God bless you so we're, much. We're lucky yes, in that we just get to be the messengers for many people that, yes. Yes. that yes. donated to the well. <laughs> thank you. And we went through and visited the three um, well sites there um, there's one at the the hospital one at the police station and one at the school and just seeing what god was doing through just the faithful giving of folks back here in texas it's just really exciting to see um, what's happened on this kind of first first stage of our project what is the bigger picture to solve the water problem as you see it what would it take I would like to have about 50 boreholes. Five zero? Yeah, because they, our fellow villagers there, they are crying for water. And again, Pastor Gerard came in this area. I think I can say that everything changed. I mean everything changed. Three boreholes have been drilled here. We are consuming safe water in three zones of the Sere Town body. The boreholes are helping. Uh, we used to have a lot of the community having to come in here to, to fetch water and sometimes we'd have to allow them in, uh, but it was very difficult to, to maintain that. And uh, I think it's been very helpful. So water, this water is, it, 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 it is going to reduce some crime rate. Even the, the rate of sickness of our police officers has reduced. Accepting God is call in Rushere is a blessing that God has connected me to different people in Uganda and out Uganda. For sure, it's a blessing. God has expanded my doors. I realize that uh, to be comfortable 
in this community i need to find a wife this time i involved some uh spiritual leaders people who are mature in the spirit of people who are mature in god's word to pray with me the person i see is jalia but i don't know whether her mother can accept that but with god nothing is impossible let's just pray but the way i see things Jalia is ready. I prayed to God and God told me that, yeah, that is a real man. And my mom said, it's fine. If he decided to be married, it's okay. He, he told me that he want to marry me and I said, it's fine. We have a friend of ours called Gerald Chitibwa. He's one of our pastors we sent. As you know, Gawa Community Church sent me out to do the work of God in our country, Rushere, where I've been for like one and a half year. But God has done great things in my life in that has brought a special person who is to be my wife called Jalia. <laughs> I want to thank so much Pastor Peter and Mrs. Irene Kassiri for, for pastoring me. And I want to thank so much for the leadership of Gawa Community Church and all fellow leaders for really trusting me to send me alone. Now we are two becoming one. <laughs> so at this time, dear friends, I want to introduce you in a special way, the one and the only Sweetheart, most beloved, Jalia. <laughs> wow. Wow, I mean, the people in Rosheri were so excited, they threw a parade. It was all full water. It was all to celebrate uh, what God had done. This is not my song. This is not my song. This is not my song. so much more than providing clean water. It's about jobs. It's about a higher quality of life. This is not mine. Help me sing along. This is not my song. This is not my song. This is not mine. This is not my song. It's about crime going down. It's about this God being glorified. Song. This is not my song. This is not mine. Help me sing. There is hope if we have hope in God. Uh, there is hope in God, really. This is not my song. This is not mine. This is not my song. I feel there is hope for Africa. There is hope for Uganda, and by the way, there is hope for Oshere. There's still a lot of work to be done. Sing along. This is not my song. This is not my song. This is not mine. This is not mine. We're sitting there 
children are dancing, it starts to rain. This is not my song. If God is saying, the water's for me. freedom and take these shoes cause I don't need them and bear it all so high up on a hill and I've been working for so long my crooked fingers to the bone say you lead me to the fountain for fill I've been pushing this cart full of noise up and down every hill of my choice But I just can't seem to find What I need to survive I Say a prayer tonight and just take me home Take my life and leave my freedom And take these shoes cause I don't need them And bear it all so high up on a hill I've been working here so long My crooked fingers to the bone See you soon, just take me home